Uh, hello there guys, uh, welcome back. Um, now that we have done all those steps, uh, preliminary work to start rigging them, let's uh, let's start with that. So I'm going to start uh, doing the uh, IK system on the left arm and then I'm going to do the FK system on the left arm and then the same with the leg, left leg and then the rest will be easy just to um, just mirror to the other side. Whatever you do on this side is exactly the same on the other one. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because you remember we have three chains here, we have the original chain which is bound to the skin we have the FK that controls when we are in FK mode and we have the um, IK that controls when, when we are in IK mode so we're going to start working with IK so I'm going to what I like to do is I'm going to go and press H and hide the original one and H and hide the um, FK and in order to do that I did that because um, I don't want to select uh, when I'm doing the rig and I want to select the wrong chain so um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, IK system that goes from here to here so um and then we're going to create a rotation oh, oops we're going to create a rotation that goes with this control so we have the left arm ik control at the moment now so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to create first i'm going to go into skeleton i think it is and then create ik handle go into the options and then uh, use a reset the tool and then go here and make sure you you don't use a single chain use a rotate plane okay so we do that and then we just click here click there and then we have the ik okay so now the moment you see this is a system that is going to automate this movement okay but um i don't want to pivot from here i want to pivot from the wrist so what i have to do is i have to move the pivot point of that and the pivot point of an ik handle is called an effector and it's here right here so you can see from the ik all the way to the wrist there is this indicator there is an actual effector that take control of all this so the effector is right here now the effector you you cannot move him like this directly you press like the other like for example here you press insert and then you could just go and move to to um, um, to any pivot point you want to any position you want the pivot point for this is a bit tricky because because this assisting is already something that is automated a solver you have to disable the solver first and then move the effector if you by any chance trying to move the effector without uh, disabling the solver then you might you might get unexpected um, behaviors and sometimes for some reason in the past I don't know if they fix in the new versions of Maya before I couldn't undo that and I have to go and restart and do my um, um, this section again so that's um, you know I have to just go and redo everything pretty much this bit specifically so it's not much work uh, you lose but you know you know you don't want to you want to be efficient with your time so what I'm going to do is you have to go into modify go into evaluate now and then all this solver here for everything the solver for cloth particles rigid bodies everything here is already it, that's what you can disable them individually but then you just say here click ignore all and now all the um, um, solvers are, are already um, disabled so now if you grab the IK handle you can see that it stopped working it doesn't solve it doesn't create the automatic um, arm system that's because it already it's been temporarily disabled so what you do is you just don't select it you just select the effector here and then you press uh, insert then you click on the icon here and then you move the effect or whatever you want you press v and you snap to the um you want to snap it to the wrist so at the moment is um is a snap right here so i press v just like any other mm, manipulation or any geometry in the viewport you press v and you snap it there and you press insert again and now you have the pivot point or the effector right there so the next thing you need to do is just enable those nodes you say evaluate all and here you can see that they're all working again so now if you grab the IK handle you can just go and you know and just just now everything moved from this point now and that's the behavior we're looking for now the next thing you need to do is um, you you I think normally what I do is I like to start working the rotation just remember what I told you earlier at the beginning when I place the joints that for example the rotation for the arm here is going to be controlled by um, this here is going to be good this is going to rotate from the wrist that's fine and this uh, axis is going to rotate from the wrist that's fine but when it comes to rotating on the X do this doesn't s look natural because nobody rotate from the wrist like that um, what you have to do is select the one before and the rotation is going to go from this so in this case the X is going to rotate from there okay so what we have to do now is we have to make sure that um, we have everything um, uh, aligned in order to to do the connection so for example this guy here, if you can see, look at the look at the local rotation axis of this guy. You see, it's to the world, okay? But this guy here, or the joint here, is completely different. You see, he got his own local rotation axis. 
So if, for example, by any chance, for example, I mean, you you are going to be uh, two in class. What are constraints? And but at the moment, for example, if I want to say um, just quickly here, so if I want to, I ha if I have two pieces of geometry here, for example, this, and then I have this, and then if I want to do an orange constraint, yeah, so I can say that uh, I say this is the master, this is the slave, and then I go into constraint. And I say orient constraint. So at the moment, uh, this guy is controlling this guy. So whenever I rotate this guy, and the other one rotate, so this guy took over the rotation of the other um, um, uh, geometry, the other piece of the other object. The same happened here. So I need to make this guy take over the rotation of this um, um, joint here. Now, but if I do it directly, for example, I say master, and I say shift slave the left wrist and I say okay this is the master this is the slave and I say constrain and I say oh, I'm going to the options make sure it's all reset that's fine I say apply see what happens so this guy here now is taking control of the rotation of this guy but you can see that this is the original position so it, that flipping that happened there is because the local rotation axis of this geometry is completely different from the local rotation of the actual joint here go down there you say this guy here now you see obviously now it's a line that's what it flipped because now they they both match you see they doesn't have any different but before if I undo this let's do this there you go so now if I select for example if I say this and I shift select this now you can see that this guy go uh, the rotation that matches this but this little um, uh, join has a different lo rotation axis, so there is a mismatch in the ro local rotation axis, and that's what happens. Why is why the arm goes up like that because they don't match. Now there is a really nice way to overcome that issue because um, something create grouping. As you know already, if you select anything, you can press Control G and you create a group. You're pretty much creating another transform on top of that transform that is already. So the transform that comes with this cube is this, but then you can create another top on top of that, and you can go and Press Control G and create another one. So we have another group inside another group inside a piece of geometry. So these three are three transformed differently. You see, transforms. Yeah. So I'm gonna delete this. So what I'm gonna have to do is create and uh, make use of that. So you say what you do is you press Control G, okay, and that gives you this uh, null when nothing selected in the viewport. You have to make sure that nothing is selected in the viewport. If you have something selected, you press Control G, then it groups this. So nothing is selected in the viewport. You press Control G, take this guy. Press F here. What is this guy here? So I press uh, probably V, middle click and drag, and then put it right there. So frame that. So now I have the geometry right there. So what I normally do is um, I take this guy here, and I'm just gonna just just for clarity, I'm gonna put here my cursor. I say here, create, edit, delete by type, history. Press Control Shift to put him here, and we go freeze transformation, and we have a uh, center pivot. Okay. So I'm just going to take the guy and say freeze transformation. Okay, I got this guy here. So now, if I take this guy here, the master, then select this guy, the slave, and then I go into constraint and I say orient constraint. So you can see now that this guy here, yeah, this is the local rotation axis. Now this guy, you see, it matches exactly the same. Now this they got exactly the same rotation axis. That's because I parent constraint. I made this guy, though this null, the slave of this um, um, join, which means they copied all the values I needed here. So that's why you got these values here. But obviously, at the moment, it's being constrained because if you open here, you got like an extra null, which is the orient constraint. But at the moment, if I delete that, now this guy is exactly aligned to the rot local rotation axis of this wrist join. So now, what I can do is I can take this guy. Okay, and I can take this, which is the left IK control. So I take this guy and I middle click and drag and I put it under here. So if I put it under here, so this guy is all dodgy, but don't worry because this guy is not going to be moved. They will be, well, you don't normally move the group, you, well, you I'm going to animate the actual control. So now, but look what happened when I did this, it inherited translation and rotation, and that's because it's, in, it's because it's, it, it went from a global. Um, rotate uh, um, global um, axis to a local axis and now this guy is inheriting 
the local rotation axis that from this null because it's, it's been placed under. So this guy is the child with this. So all we have to do in order to match with this is just freeze the transformation like this. So now look at this. So I'm, I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to click and say uh, display. I'm going to go here and say display. Uh, transform display and say local rotation axis. I'm going to put control shift so I can have empty people here. So local rotation axis. So this guy you see, this guy here has this local rotation axis. This guy here has this local rotation axis. You see how they, how they mismatch. Now, if I take this guy now and I say freeze transformation, look what happened. You see, he aligned automatically to this guy. So now this geometry has the exact local rotation axis that this freeze geometry has. Okay. So now that that happens, now uh, I like to you know rename it. So I'm gonna take this. I don't know what I do is I take this guy, say Control C paste it here on top and I put always here underscore GRP or capital GRP group so this is the group and later on you will see why they are group because you're gonna bring stuff along so pretty much later on when I for example move the hip down I will have a group that allows to con part and constrain this guy along so when you move the wrist here like that for example the arm goes along because it's being part and constrained you will see in a minute later on when I start um, doing the rest of the of the rotation on, and all the, the rest of the rig in this case. So now those two guys matches. I'm just gonna take here and I'm just gonna delete that. Oh not delete, just disable that viewport there. And there you go. So now these guys both match. But the guy on top is got his own, you know, rotation here. And that is what allows to be the the one under the child has a different allows it to go zero out. So it, it would pretty much freeze the transformation. You just remember the principle that we um talked to at the beginning that we need to have the controls always, always zero out here. It should be no rotation, no translation, or only one in scale if you're scaling. Okay, because um, animators need to start from zero here. Okay, so okay, so we had that sorted. Now what we have to do is go back to what we did before. So if we analyze this guy here, we say that um, we are going to inherit from here, not the X. We're not going to do this because we're going to inherit it from here. Okay. So what we're gonna inherit from here is pretty much what we have to do is make sure that this guy now, because this guy matches the wrist, now this control has to have control over the rotation in annoying X, but the rotation in Y and the rotation in Z. Okay, so we need to parent control or in constraint this or the join to this guy. So we press uh so I think it's for this will be the master. And then we select the slave, which is the wrist. Okay. So we have master slave, and then we go into constrain, and we say um, orient, and we say that we, um, you know, we said this. We're gonna uh, constrain only the Y and the Z. The X, we're gonna do it later on. So this is all the fine, and we said apply. So you see what happened? I did the constraining. And nothing happened. You see how the arms stay there? Because now this guy, like I said, matches exactly the local rotation axis of the wrist, so there's no flipping. Okay, this is very important. So now I can control this with this control. I can control this with this control. But at the moment, if I want to twist, it had nothing happened because I haven't connected that. And the reason for that is because you can see that this is only being controlled the Y and the Z by this orient constraint, which the weight of the master is going to be the left arm IK control. So now we need to constrain uh, the rotation in X of this guy with this guy here. Okay, so these two guys should match, so it shouldn't be a problem. So we say uh, master, and we say slave, and we go here and say uh, constrain, and we go into orient, and now we're going to do the opposite. We're only going to do X, and we say um, we click apply. You see, now this happens. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a twist here. It shouldn't be much of a problem. Ideally, in order for that to work, what we can, ideally, I don't want that twisting here. So what we can do is we can just undo this. Maybe we're gonna try to fix it here. Yeah, so what I can do is I'm gonna take this guy here. Let me do something back here. I'm just gonna take this. Actually, I'm gonna take this joint. Let's undo this. I'm gonna take this joint here. And I'm going to go into the outliner. Oh, I'm going to go into here. Select the constraint. 
and it just deletes it. So I'm just going to delete the constraint. So there's nothing in here. That's fine. We're going back to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy, okay, which is the master of the um, oh the group that we select. You remember that this this guy inherited all the the um, rotation or local rotation actually from the wrist. But I took X as well when I shouldn't. So I, what I can do probably I can fix it as if I say master slave and yeah again master slave no not that one play this master slave the group it's already being put under but don't worry master um and we call the group the slave and then we go into orient yeah I think let's see if it works and uh, we say only constrain the x and we say apply you see it changes a little bit that's the different that we had before so this guy here now has a constraint i'm just going to delete it so now this this guy has actually taken the rotation of this so when i add it it shouldn't have any flip so let's start with that one first so we say master we we'll say again okay we say master and we say uh, slave and we go into constraint or in constraint we say we're going to do x and y y and z yeah apply nothing happened that's great now again, we take the master. Let's see, did I didn't clean it. Did I clean it? Yes, I think I did. Yeah. So master, shift, slave, and now we go into constraint and we go into orient constraint. We click on Y. We say apply. Ooh, a tiny touch there happened, but that's fine. Pretty much twisted a tiny little bit there. I think that's because I didn't freeze the transformation. Let me see if I can do it again, guys. Now let's take this. I'm gonna undo all the bits that I did with the constraint. Let's see that that's happening. Yeah. Okay. At the moment, this guy is not controlling anybody. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna take it out quickly here, I'm gonna put out that guy is being there, this guy I'm gonna put it under here and we say freeze transformation again and then I'm gonna say master slave I start with that one and we say uh, oin and we go yeah X and we say apply yeah a tiny little bit there don't know why Anyway, it shouldn't happen, but it's okay. You can deal with that. So we say then master, slave, and we go into constraint, or in constraint, and we say Y and Z, apply. Tiny little touch there. That's fine. I don't know why I forget. So now we have control here. We have control there. And we have control here. Okay, that's fine. So now, um, now we have to connect this control like that. And it's being controlled by this guy. So you can either put this IK handle under here by parent constraint by parenting, or you can just parent constrain it. I think we're gonna stick to parent constraining for now and see that it's okay. So we say <sighs> we're gonna take this guy. We say master. And where is that guy? This is the IK handle. I think it's this one here. So we say master, control click constrain. So we have those selected. So the master, the, 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 the master slave, constrain. And we say uh, parent constraint. So we go here in the options, it's here, reset. And we say we're going to trans constrain the uh, translation. And the, I think we're going to do, yeah, we're going to do only a translation, not the rotation. So in that case, we probably can do a point constraint if we want to. But let's see. Let's do let's do a parent constraint. And see what happens. We say apply. Everything is okay. So now this guy here, yeah, because this guy here uh, rotate it doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we take this. Now we have this taken care of. We have this angle taken care of. This axis this taken care of brilliant and if I want to move now I can move and I can still rotate 
okay so it's all working and that's it that's all we have to do for the arm so this is the IK handle um, setup one last thing we need to do is we need to take this um, left elbow IK control and then point strain it to this guy here oh sorry not point constrain pull vector constrain it so so who's gonna be this is gonna be the master this is gonna be the slave the IK handle and we go into constraint and we say pull vector constraint there's nothing here so we say apply okay so now we have this control that controls the elbow okay it's a little bit of a twist in there but that's fine no but not no, I don't think not if you move this guy most likely you're gonna be moving the arm as well so see that guy is always gonna be pointing to that so you can animate this as well so okay so that's done and that's it that's that's the IK handle set up for this okay so that's all what you have to do um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the uh, in the next video I'm going to do the FK system um, sort out all the stuff all the structure and then I'm then I'm going to do the switching between one of those how they switch on with the set driven keys how one of them go on and off depending on the on where I am here okay and then for the vi couple of videos later then I will do the left the, the the leg and then you just pretty much have to mimic the thing to the other side and you're done guys with the arms and then we're going to start working the spine later on all right thank you very much guys see you later bye bye